Pack is on his way to win it, overtaking Afi. Is Pack gonna win it by KO? This is gonna be the knockout win for Pack, the Eminem player. Well, hello everyone, welcome to the TMGL Weekly Show. I am full and joined by Sinus, who is uh, frantically typing to our wonderful interview. He is right now. It has been a hectic week for a lot of changes and, well, we kind of predicted it. We said that it's an unlikely but possible outcome that two new play players would end up with champion medals and that's exactly what happened this past week. Yeah, it's actually unbelievable uh, going into it. <laughs> Two, two of the four, uh, sorry, yeah, two, half the players, of course, didn't have a champion medal just yet. And of course, those two win the eventual <laughs> match. So, yeah, another week where we have no duplicate champion medals. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, and it does reshuffle the rankings a fair bit. But uh, just to give you a little heads up, hello, I'm Fallen. Uh, once again, I'm a part of this broadcast. I'm not sure why, but they want to keep me on every week now. Shit. Apparently, I'm awesome. Quoting our yeah, that's uh, that's uh, it, no, that's definitely true, indeed. Um, yeah, and I'm seeing as I've been here a couple of weeks already. I'm winking at the camera uh, on accident, so here we go. Uh, <laughs> already doing the Trackmania memes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, ready for some Trackmania content. Yeah, speaking of content, let's go back to week four. This or oh, last Sunday, it was an intense week, and really, it was about time he won one. Carl Jr. steps up, takes the first champion medal of their season so far and does so in convincing fashion a 5-0 win-loss record last weekend a, a very strong performance from the canadian not something you would have uh, sort of uh, something you'd expect maybe week one or two it took a little while for him to get going but as you'll hear later on from the man himself he seems to be finding a bit of a mojo now and it's looking more confident every single week yes indeed and honestly it was uh we kind of knew it was waiting for that moment. Carl was getting the champion medal. He was already strong the first three weeks and this time he executed. And here he is at the top of the leaderboard now. Because, well, uh, you know, it's funny because uh, I was thinking about the fact that Carl could be first at the end of this week only if no one else gets a duplicate. So there's a lot of things <laughs> that happened like to go well for him so that he is now first on the leaderboard. But here he is, yeah, back at the, uh, at the top where uh, a lot of people think I think uh, expected him to be and yeah. yeah here he is especially having to beat out Mime and Kappa in the final round as well to win that champion medal on knife edge it, it, it was a tougher round as well because he wasn't the only player who was on fire in that lobby that mainly went to Otak who was having one oh, of yeah. the maps of his life up until that very final round where lost out to Carl Jr and then settled for the second champion medal he also picks up his first one a big win for the Frenchman you think that had to be his week with all the momentum that was just in his favor in that final map it, it there didn't seem to be anyone else apart from maybe Carl that could have stopped him and in the end it was Carl that took the first one and Otak the second indeed and uh, it's amazing to see Otak do well the other rookie beside Mime and I think we've uh, had a lot of talk about Mime this season already <laughs> and how good he is and Otak's been going under the radar a little bit, but here we are, mm -hmm. also with a champion medal in his pocket now, and uh, shows that uh, he, just as mine, uh, should be in the Turkmenia Grand League, and here he is at top 7 now on the ranking. Pretty insane. And as we mentioned previously, now that is 8 out of the eight, uh, the 16 that have won champion yeah. medals. We are starting to get to the point where we're running out of people who could pick up 
a champion there within a feasible nature. A couple of players spring to mind. Maybe Binks could make a jump up. We've seen what we sort of expect Pac to at this point. Maybe Granady as well could easily make that jump because these are the people at the top of their game but just haven't seemed to be able to string together success on consecutive maps to get those wins like they maybe ought to have at this point. Yeah, I think I'm counting about eight players who could potentially get another champion medal because honestly, really, it could be anyone. <laughs> could be anyone, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think you uh, got the prime suspects ready there. Um, I would, yeah, I mean, I would throw the rest of the players. Yeah, it's so weird because I would throw Papu and uh, Afi and Scrappy, Gwen, Spam. Yeah, honestly, all of them. All of them could do it. But yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, we had um, Mime and Kappa who got gold medals last yeah. week. Because they got into the champion match and almost could get a, ch a second one, but uh, yeah, it wasn't meant to be. But also Mime and Kappa once again with great weeks. Yeah, I mean Mime, again, that's the fourth week in a row that it's been silver or higher for them. It it's been a very strong season so far for Mime. Kappa coming back off the back of getting their, uh, their first champion medal uh, two weeks ago in week three. Coming back with another gold here in week four. This is a strong run of form now heading into the final two weeks. But again, it's uh, it's all to play for. Every single player is determined to get those medals, determined to get uh, as high up the rankings as they can. Uh, and one person that seems to have fell a little bit off in terms of that you know, same consistent, same performance would have to be Massa, who you know started off so strong week one. And it has now just not strung anything better than a bronze for three weeks in a row. Yeah, indeed. It's a little, the momentum has gone away from his first mm. champion medal and now a triple bronze. I think, yeah, it feels a little bit... Uh, uh, inter yeah, it's interesting to see that he got the champion medal and he is kind of safe, right? And we think mm. Mas is doing really well because he's high up in the standings, but he's not been performing that well after the first week. And you can see as well the win-loss ratio is, uh, well, negative, even though he is top eight on the leaderboards. Yeah, all it would take is someone right below him, someone like Granady or Papu, even Pak would displace him. Just someone with maybe a gold medal to their name, picking up their first champion medal, would be able to do so. And that, it really, you have to focus on those players from 9 to 12 for that. Those are the players that are almost all positive, in the, uh, with the exception being Pak, who's an 8 and 12 record right now. But those are the players that are as close as anyone else to making that break into the top eight that are gonna yeah. use that champion medal and springboard off of it uh, you've really got to put your money on on the players that have been there more consistently over the past few seasons that would be your packs that would be granady who broke in last season and has had a, a stellar first season and has followed it up again here with three golds already Th those are the two players you're looking at maybe historically speaking from this sort of the iteration of Trackmania, those are the players you'd expect to see getting those champion medals very soon. Yeah, indeed. And uh, the funny thing is as well, we're talking about uh, Massa here. If he gets a champion medal, if he gets another insane week, he's, he's not falling out of top eight. No, he's about <laughs> talking about like being first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird uh, standings to have. It's just, it's so even, it's so close. So there's no real runaway player this season. Yeah, and the best thing about it is if Massa does do that, uh, he could be 13 and 12 win loss record and sat on yeah. two champion medals. It's not easy. Yeah. Just efficiently <laughs> winning. That's, yeah, yeah. Wins, wins when he needs to, <laughs> not, not any other point. Uh, when you look at someone like Carl, though, on the opposite side, all the way up at the top of that fight, uh, the qualify, uh, qualified for the final rankings, those top eight will qualify for the final event. Uh, it, it does feel like the, the win-loss has been heavily in favor of Carl. We've been waiting to see that push through. 15-5. Uh, yeah. It is an incredible performance this season. Finally gets the champion medal to follow up on. It, it couldn't really have been going much better for him. Yeah, and I just... I always uh, have a little smile on my face when we look at uh, Carl Jr.'s Trackmania career, and it's just so ridiculous. Just gold. It's just gold. It's like, <laughs> this is why we call him the best. It's this, <laughs> right? Like, it just you can pull up his player card, and it's hard to display all of his achievements on it. So, <laughs> yeah, he's now back at uh, number one once again. Um, and we have an interview ready uh, as well later on. Ooh, yeah. But before we do so, I think we should go into a couple of highlights from the last week and see some of the rounds and actions from the casters themselves.
il le sait pas et il se dit ça se trouve il y a Afi qui est contact et du coup il choque un petit peu et du coup il panique un petit peu mais ça a l'air quand même de passer malgré l'échec quoi que est-ce que Massa va réussir à le faire Massa va le chercher je te déteste Pack is leading up until this point. Let's take a look. He's leading by 0.4 of a second. Pack, you can save it a little bit. Moda is dead. Aurel also not too far. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> oh, more speed for Otak. This is promising. Watch out for the lines, though. Oh, this is better. Come on, just the final ball. Please, 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 Gwen Papou, ça peut se jouer maintenant. Afi qui a quand même pas mal de retard euh, à cause de, de, des précédents moments sur cette carte. Gwen qui va toucher. Papou qui va clipper à l'intérieur. Mesdames et messieurs, l'opportunité est parfaite. Et c'est Afi. Identité, mesdames et messieurs. Ça peut se jouer maintenant entre les deux joueurs. Identité de Bren, identité de Afi et de Kappa. Afi avec une très bonne vitesse. Il va récupérer ce passage de la carte. Kappa qui est juste derrière. Kappa qui est juste derrière. Afi qui récupère la première position. Et ce il Missing the turn. And Mara will not win. Where did mine come from? No, teďka budeme muset kapa spolehat na chybu. Jedno ze dvou protihráčů před ním. Má dobrou lineu. A pozor, máme jeden mimo podklapu. Je to doma. It's a Nico with Massa in the exit, but Binks has 0.5 of a second to work with. Will he survive the ending with the laptop keyboard crashes? And it is scrappy. Oh, oh, in first position. Oh, 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 oh. we won by a thousand. <laughs> Ah, ça joue sur l'identité au deck qui a une avance quand même assez confortable. Oh oui, le go card. Oh oui, allez, allez, encore une, encore une, encore une, encore une. Encore une, encore une. Let's go, let's go. Et il le fait. Mine is three tenths down. If Ota can keep it, it's game. No, both crash at the same spot. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's still game on despite those blunders. Are you for real? Allez, you end. Dis-moi que tu peux le faire. C'est bon, c'est bon, c'est bon. L'identité. C'est bon, le jump. Le jump, oui. Allez, allez. Oui. La médaille champion, elle est là. Let's go. C'est fait. Wow. I mean, uh, it doesn't get closer than that or more emotional than that. Otaku winning first champion medal of the season doing so in such a, a crazy set of circumstances the double bonk there before not even at the identity it was it was an incredible week for everyone involved so many interesting things happened during during this week man are you Afi winning two triple finalist rounds in a row like what is that it's just <laughs> there's <laughs> And all of these rounds that just end up within thousands of a second, yeah, yeah, I, I like, I like it a lot. Yeah, I, I, sure. I do too. It's good content. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Content. You're completely right about that one, and I'm sure that the next video coming up where we go into the best round of the week is going to be a banger too. Triple finalist between Kappa, Bren, and Afi. Very interesting. Whoever wins this match, uh, round wins the match, together with Carl now. Oh, I see then. Different lines for the players in this match, but it is Offie getting off to the best start. Carl length ahead of Coppa. Brandon with a good setup into the dirt. Can he carry the speed out? No, loses it a little bit here. But a very inside line. Look how different from the trajectory. This is the Kappa line going very wide and very wide with the speed. And that is such a beautiful exit there. Kappa with a 0.2 advantage now. And actually driving on pace for a 105 if he gets a good ending. Oh, he's trying his best to follow. Great eye slide inside approach. He's gonna commit and he will be level with Kappa before the end. Good speed here. Can Offy try to snipe it in the ending? Goes all in for the speed apart and Offy here with a beautiful end will be able to secure it. But all three players were within seven hundredths. I mean, you heard it there first from virtual.
within 700. So three players all on finalist. Uh, yeah. It, it, it doesn't get more intense than that. The final round of that map, it, it all came down to who could hold their nerve in the identity. And in the end, it, I, I couldn't even tell you one. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I was just yeah, enjoying indeed. it. I was just watching the cars. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, we can unironically say here, I love Trackmania Esports. It's, I do uh, too. These rounds <laughs> are just amazing. Yeah. Uh, oh. And speaking of amazing, uh, I think it's time we uh, we get into the everyone's favorite portion of the weekly show. We go into the interview segments. And uh, well, one of the players couldn't be with us uh, for the interview live, so we decided to do a quick little pre-recorded interview. So I'm going to tee myself up. Have a good one, Pass Fallen. Take it from here. Thank you, Future Fallen. It's good to be back on this broadcast. And I've brought along a special guest with me to uh, interview one of the greats of the Trackmania community. Foof is up above me and to my right, on my left in actuality, it's Carl Jr. Is Carl. Firstly, congratulations. Big week for you, the 5-0, I believe, the, the, the champion medal. After four weeks of not having one, it must feel good to finally be back on top and back at the top of the leaderboards. Yeah, it feels really good. Um, I'm relieved that I finally was able to, to achieve uh, the champion medal, and thanks for having me, guys. I should have you. Awesome. Of course, of course. Well, first things first, thanks for being here and making this happen. Obviously, I had to work around and make sure all our schedules obviously work. So big shout out to you. Thank you for doing this, and thank you for the production on the back end. But I have a very important question here for you, Carl. Last season, obviously, we talked about it in that pre-production meeting. You know, didn't have that best season. But ever since the seeding event, this season has been going well. You started in sixth, then went to fifth, then went to fourth, and then this week you are now the lone top dog sitting in first. How does it feel, my guy? Uh, it feels great. I mean, so far, I think I've had a really great season. I came prepared all the, the weeks. I played good all the weeks. The matches are less than the previous weeks. It's because the, the players were better. So I'm really happy with how I play right now. And finally, I got the medal. So, so yeah, everything works good in the end. There you are. You are one of the, uh, the eight players that have received a champion medal. Every single week, different people have won. Maybe names you wouldn't have expected to have won a medal got some before you, but would you like to to sort of comment on the fact that this might be the most stacked TMGL season we've had yet in terms of quality? In terms of quality, it is indeed. I think in terms of raw skill, I mean, the last season we've had a lot of, of good players as well. It's the same thing, but this season with the format and how it is, it's really the first season I feel like everybody takes it seriously. And that's... That's why we see like from match one to, to match four that the skill gap between the matches is really, really low. Uh, the difference, I mean. So so the, the, the skills is really there from all the players. And yeah, it's the most stacked season we've ever seen, but by far. Hmm. I mean, it, it certainly shows not only on the scorecard, but in the races themselves. But Carl, I want to get a little bit more into the nitty gritty here. I want to talk about a map that is, uh, some people love it, a lot of people seem to dislike it. I want to talk about Tiny Gap. It was one that tripped you up not this week, but the week before, and then you come back and are able to put on a show. What was the difference between last week and this week? Not, not much, to be honest. Last week, I had really good PBs, I had really good consistency, but in the in the 15 minutes before my champion match, I was awful. I, I was completely bad, I didn't know why, and in the match, I didn't find the pace I had in practice. And I, right after the match, I just tried the map, and right away, I did like a, a time that was minus oh. 0.50 on the best run I had in my <laughs> match. I was like, oh, damn it. And I didn't do anything in the week to, to to change that because I left on a positive note and then mm -hmm. uh, Saturday before one day before the, the step I just played the map a, f a few times and it went really really well so I was confident on it so yeah I, I like the it map definitely I, showed. Yeah, I think it's a really good map actually <laughs> I think you might be in the minority there, but yeah, I, know. <laughs> I love it. It's a content map for me. I, 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 I enjoy it. watching it. I think it's great. I think it's a wonderful map. I'm a big map. fan of the tinier gap between the actual things with the ramp underneath of where you're supposed to land. But, you know, neither here nor there. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, to, to, to get us back on track now that we've discussed tiny gap a fair bit, coming back to you, Cole, you, you're always seemingly to one of the favorites 
it in TMGO. You're one of the more decorated players in history. You've got that experience, you've got the skill that a lot of people struggle to find in terms of that consistent levels of skill. But there are a lot of other players this season that are pushing those boundaries, same way that you have been for forever now, it feels like. Who do you think are the strongest opponents in the field amongst the the eight champions, including yourself? Who do you think the ones that might be pushing you the furthest? Well, how I see it is that the the 16 players in the league and even like the, the 25 best players uh, of the world can um, can do really good results or can can even become world champion. But it all depends on, on the minding on how and who really wants it. Like um, I. The, the skill gap between the pros are so close nowadays, it's really more about who who's who wants it the most, like who trains the most, who has the minding for it, who who wants it the most. So it's really hard for the for the old guys to find that motivation again, to be that hungry like we, we used to be in our prime. So mm -hmm. I'd say I'd say in the in the upcoming league, uh, how I see it, my mime is really, really hungry and he's a really good player to to, to get the the title, so I think from what I've seen in the first uh, four weeks, he's the favorite, together with with Bren, based on how they play the at the start of the league. But then again, it all depends who wants it the most. That that's how I see it, and that's how I always see it. Enough. One could say it might be all about drive and or power, Fallen, but important <laughs> times of the day, Carl Jr., you talk about wanting it, and what is that wanting it look like? What What is that practice scenario, what does that training look like throughout the week for you as you prepare? Uh, so I, I'm at my university, and I have like a, a tight schedule between Tuesdays and Fridays, mm -hmm. so what I did in the first three weeks is that I'll always practice on Saturday the map that is up not, not in the, the, the step the day after but in eight weeks prior so I'm playing like a map that is not played tomorrow basically on Saturdays mm -hmm. just to be more prepared and on Monday my uh, my day off the, the university I try to at least get really good on one of the two new maps but I really wanted to, to have my PB set and just to work on my consistency the rest of the week and then on Friday and Saturday, I tried to optimize the last map I'm missing. That's how it went a bit for me in the last, uh, the last month. I hear you, I hear you. Very dedicated, as always, with you when it comes to the Trackmania side of things. But uh, one last question, just want to touch on it. It's a player a bit close to my heart, national hero in Park, who hasn't necessarily hit the ground running the first four weeks. You maybe would have expected, like yourself, to be already hitting those champions by week three, but hasn't seemed to find that form. You think that that's something that might be plaguing the minds of these players, that they're maybe not hitting the uh, the same steps, the same rhythm that they had in the previous seasons, and uh, it's keeping them from reaching their, their potential. Well, it's it's just really hard. I think they, like, uh, I think Pack and Afi are in the same... Uh... Same category, like really, really good players with really insane results in the past year, in the past two years. And this season, they, they struggle a bit in terms of result, in terms of medal. But I played, I, I played, I feel like eight times this season already. And in every match, it was like super close between us. Like he Very reached true. finalist a lot of times. So it's, it's like, it's details. Like if they win one round, that they lost, it can change their whole season at this point. So I'm not sure with them, because uh, with Pack, because I, I didn't play him a lot in in the season yet. Only the the last step, and he was feeling really confident, mm -hmm. and we all saw that because he was really good. So it's it's all details. Like really, really good players can just be sometimes a bit unlucky, or just doesn't finish the good run at the, the good time and they can be it can be between a champion medal or a silver medal at that point so it's not because they are worse it's not it's just they have to take their opportunity in the next two weeks and they have the skill to do it absolutely well thank you for your time we are going to be throwing it back to future cells and Zinus I think will have a lot of fun in receiving this throw from me so uh, thank you again for your time Carl we wish you the best of luck for week 5 and week 6 and hopefully we'll get to speak to you again soon thank you very much thanks for the interview guys
All right, thank you, Past Fallen, for that interview. Uh, it was a really good one. Oh, thank um, you. That's, uh, that was great. And uh, let's immediately move to the next one because Ooh. we have our next interviewee ready for you. His name is Otak. He also has a champion medal. Welcome to the show, Otak. Wink, guys, <laughs> wink. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to uh, the weekly show, my friend. Congratulations on your medal. Uh, a absolutely stellar performance uh, throughout that final map. You looked like you were on fire throughout it. Uh, did you, you think this sort of performance was something, you know, being one of the you know, the newer players in TMGL this season, being one of the rookies, do you think this sort of performance was something you could pull off? Did you think this is where you would be uh, coming into week five and six? I honestly think that... Uh... In the beginning of the season, I will finish like in 12th position or something like that. So my my uh, goal was to have one gold at least. <laughs> and then uh, when when I uh, just uh, start to to play uh, last uh, last Sunday, I was like, what the fuck is happening? Like, <laughs> why am I in champion match in uh, in match five? Like, it's crazy. Yeah, but uh, you did get there in the end, and that's good. And what went through your head there when you know the last round happened, and you you get that champion medal? <laughs> like, can you describe how that uh, felt? Well, the 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 last round, it was like I was like 0.5 ahead, I think, and then I just clipped the world uh, the world ride, and I was like, what the fuck? What am I doing? <laughs> and then when I I put the head on uh, in the the CP after, it was. Always like uh, 0.5 ahead, so it was like crazy. I was like, "What the fuck?" He, he crashed also, and yeah, that was like I was very, very happy at this time. Well, you, you've already mentioned your sort of end goal for the season was that sort of around the twelfth coming into it. Now you've got a champion medal uh, under. Your belt, you've got one. You're you're sat at the the lower end of the land uh, standings with other medals. But do you think now you've got that comfort of having a single champion medal? Do you think you can use that to push on, maybe find your first gold, maybe even find a second champion medal in the final two weeks of uh, of this season? Yeah, obviously. Like now, the goal is to to have the the playoffs. So I think, well, with, with the uh, a, sir, uh, a second uh, champion medal, I will go in playoff for sure. But I don't know if with a gold, one gold, I will be in playoff. But the goal is always to have a gold uh, now for the two last steps, and we will see. Yeah, that's a good point. I think uh, gold is well, champion medal seems really like a high goal, and if you have a good week, you can get it. But gold, yeah, if you have a good performance, you're probably gonna lock one of those medals in because there are four of them. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's a good strategy. And do you think it is going to be enough for when you end up at the end of the season? I don't even know, but for sure I'm like in TMGL for the next season because uh, it only has uh, like uh, twelve uh, champion medal medals, so I won't be in uh, head to head for sure. So it's great for me. Like that was the main yeah. goal. Now I can play for the playoffs, but if I didn't make it to the playoff, it's like no problem. I think there is, it, it feels like there's a layer of certainty that anyone that's got a champion medal so far might be secured for that top eight. But looking at the leaderboard, all it would take would be someone like Ranadi or Papu to pick up a champion medal themselves. And then all of a sudden you're now on that cusp of going into the 9-12, to 12, into that final chance. Do you think... Uh, the, getting those extra gold medals now to, to try and wrap up the, f the season with a bang, do you think that's necessary for not just yourself, but for everyone who's got a champion medal to try and secure their position? Yeah, obviously, like, uh, I think for everyone now, like, it's the main goal to have a, a champion medal. But, uh, yeah, for me now it's done, so <laughs> I can just focus <laughs> on getting golds and see what happens next. Right. Yeah, indeed. And how are you going to prepare to get the gold? How did you train for this season, basically? Um, do you have like a certain schedule where you do a couple of hours every day? Or can you go into that a little bit? Uh, for the three first steps, I was like, no life. Like, very, very not life. And I think it may have been, uh, put a bit of pressure on me. 
and like the the four steps the the yeah the steps four i was like a bit no train for me at least like i put some hours but not like the the three first steps so my goal was to just uh, do uh, what i can and uh, let's see for the <laughs> the two last step to to see and uh, finally i just get the champion medal even if i'm like less trained than the other steps so i was like okay it's a bit weird and now i'm just training like uh, as as usual, I'd say, like a couple hours a day, and uh, and yeah, now we'll see. Well, you do have two new maps coming in this week. We'll go over those a little later on. But uh, do you feel like you know coming off the back of winning in your lobbies for the three original maps last week to to wrap up that step? Do you think that getting a top two is a distinct possibility going into uh, track four and five? Or do you feel like you're going to necessarily just look to consolidate and get a very strong performance out of the bat with the first three maps as opposed to ending strong this time? Uh, I think like the, the three first maps are better for me now. Because it's like my my better maps, like the the two last map from last step was my better maps of all the season, I guess. Mm -hmm. And now with the the two last map from this step, there is like turnover and uh, hurt. Mm -hmm. And on turnover, I'm actually terrible on it. <laughs> like it's such a weird map, <laughs> and you need to put a lot of hours to to understand the map. So for now, I'd say I will start I will start to to just be good on the surfer maps. And the two last map, we'll just see. <laughs> if I can do good, then it's okay. And if I not, it's not very problematic. Yeah, and the format does save you a little bit there. For example, if you do play very well in the first three maps, get into a champion match going into a turnover, I guess you can still get a very good result in the end, right? Yeah, I think it might. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, is there worst silver case is silver. On, uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, worst case is silver. So it's it's great. Like, see, if I take silver, it's okay. I say it's not. Yeah, would put you on your second silver medal and with that bronze also in your back pocket that could be very crucial coming into the final few weeks but you also have the the odd situation of having there's a couple of guys that are just outside of the top eight who've got these positive win loss records but haven't been able to pick up those champion medals people that been in hitting the gold medals do you think that starting to win more consistently on the maps and getting those consistent wins under your belt to try and snag more golds and silvers. Is that a difficult task in comparison to like pushing on uh, and sort of, sort of resting on your laurels in a sense with you, you know, realizing that a map's not yours? Is it is it harder to stay consistently winning uh, in comparison to that? Yeah, I guess because like there is maybe uh, two or three guys that they are in a positive ratio and don't have a, a champion medal yet. So as I say, like the goal is the playoffs, but if I'm not in the playoffs, it's like no problem. I will just try to do good. If I play good, then it's fine. And if I not, I will be a bit mad, but it's no problem. If I play good and I not make it to playoffs, it's fine. I don't really care because it's there's the, the last chance as well. Yeah, indeed. It sounds like you're very happy with the champion medal <laughs> yeah. from last week because this is really like a huge weight off your shoulder. Mm -hmm. And uh, so sadly, we're slowly running out of time. I want to give you one more opportunity to maybe give a shout out or like say something to your fans while you're here. Um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, shout out to uh, Carl and Bren because I trained with them and uh, all the people who support me on the, on the Discord. I, uh, I am uh, every time. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right, thank awesome. you very much for your time. We appreciate thank it, you. and uh, yeah. best of luck for the final two weeks. Thanks, guys. Well, uh, definitely a, a happy Otak, I think it's the best yeah, way to describe sure. him. Very positive, very looking forward to the next few weeks with someone who's arguably looking forward to them a little more is our next guest, someone who's been hunting for a champion medal for quite some time hasn't yet found one it is of course the one the only pack hello my good friend hi guys how you doing doing great thank you how are you 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not bad. I'm not bad. I still have a little bit of an essence of a cold going on, but uh, I hope I don't sound too bad. No, it's, it's all good uh, from this side. Welcome to the show, Pack. Just in time, <laughs> but uh, it's good to see you here. Um, it's nice to have you in an interview. Normally, we you, we would expect you to have a champion medal if we are interviewing you, but you're here with gold. Somewhat of a rocky start of the season. Yeah, how do you yeah. feel right now uh, with your position? Uh, it's rough. It really is rough. I mean, I'm happy I've moved away from 15th. It's been uh, a terrible start to the season. I couldn't get anything really going so far. And then to, to finally show that I can actually win some matches and, you know, actually get somewhere um, through the last step, I think it, it's it's kind of kicked up the motivation levels and I really, really want to get a champions medal to just get into playoff. Like, I, I just, I just kind of like need it now, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, last week you were, uh, it felt like just a little ways, like you were close to getting it, and you had all of the momentum, but let you down in track forward bowl. Just that, that map seemed to just sort of take away that momentum that you had coming through the first three maps. Do you think it? the sort of consistency you have to keep up throughout all five maps is that something that is necessarily a struggle right now for you or is that something that it, it was sort of like an adjustment process with the new system and the new format that's in place i think right now it's a struggle i think last season's finale wasn't a struggle it's more i think you spend so long doing the tracks in six laps you play the track so long, you know where not to crash, you know where to risk, you know all of this stuff. And you've had, what, we had eight weeks last season learning all the tracks. And then you go into a final where you're just training one lap versions. I feel like that's when I'm at my best so I can, you know, be fast and consistent. Whereas these, you have to be fast straight away after a week. You have to be consistent after a week. And I think you need to spend a lot of time to be able to get to that point. And I just haven't. You know, I haven't managed to be consistent yet. I think even last step, I crashed so many times. I think I was quite fortunate the way I was just faster in some of the rounds where I did win. Um, I, I think I am just lacking a lot of consistency at the moment. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping this week I can change that. I do like all five of the tracks. So I'm, I'm hoping, yeah, I, ho I hope they, they kind of, it kind of works. And I feel like, so far in the season, I think the first few steps, the maps didn't really suit me in general anyway. And we're getting to the point of tracks starting to fit my style a little bit more. So I'm hoping, really hoping that this step <laughs> goes to plan and I don't crash as much. All right, so the comeback of pack is coming in the end of the season, hopefully. Um, but yeah, is the, is, the, is the champion medal coming? Do you feel it coming up next Sunday or maybe the one after? How sure are you that you can pull it off, basically? I mean, I, f I feel more and more confident now. It's like last step, it just helped me gather up some, you know, some confidence because I've been losing everything. I mean, what was I? I was like two and yeah. seven before like this step. So yeah, I think getting a 4-1 uh helps me realize that look oh you are still you know as good as everyone else and can challenge everyone and so yeah i feel like putting more effort again this week like i did last week get ready and you know just just try and feel it on sunday and then hopefully the champions medal will come and i'd have a little bit of weight lifted off my shoulders that ah you know, I finally got the champions medal and I can, you know, get ready for playoffs. Uh, last week we did get to see both of the rookies now finally have their champion medals. We saw Mime earlier on in the season and throughout the season had a very good season himself. And Otak, of course, last week uh, taking that last spot in the champion medal side of things. Do you think that there's maybe more or less expectation on the rookies nowadays coming into TMGL as opposed to those that have been there like yourself for, for so long that have had and have been the most consistent players for uh, the, the longest time. Do you think there's less pressure on them now to, to come in and try and upset the established norm? I don't really know, to be honest. I think <laughs> for them too, there was. They were so much like 
not better, but like it was a clear, it was a clear gap between them two and the rest of Challenger League. And mm-hmm. so I think they had, well, certainly themselves had expectations to come in and do well. But also, I think a lot of people were like, "God, oh, you know, they're going to come in and sort of rock the TM Joe a little bit." I think there's a lot of pressure on people staying up, though, in terms of like just for everyone in general. I think there's a pressure on, you know, the people that did well on the season before. So, say for instance, me. There's a lot of pressure to, you know, you you just won TMGL, you're meant to be good, you know, and you're sitting in fifteenth. Like the pressure was ridiculous. I think for me, Afi, yeah. he was second last season, and he's not finding the lucky rounds to you know get through and stay up into like the challenger matches and the gold matches by the end of the by the end of the um steps and then obviously Carl wasn't winning and you know that's unheard of so <laughs> it's i think there was a lot of pressure on like the three people qualified for the world cup even Gwen you know Gwen's not <laughs> winning everything and he's at the bottom and i think people are a bit shocked by all that as well so i feel like i, th- I feel like there's immense pressure for everyone not just the rookies coming in, but just the whole of TMGL. Just you know, if if you do one thing different to what you ha- are known for, uh, yeah, people are like on you just like that straight away. Yeah, I can imagine there be being a lot of pressure, and I do notice from the interviews that we've been doing over the last couple of weeks that people that have the champion medal they are really like relieved. Like there's a lot of stress falling away from their shoulders because they feel like, oh yeah, I'm kind of safe now. Uh, from like relegating which is you know very scary because there are so many good people um I, like how can you uh, how do you handle the pressure now that you're the end of the season is coming up and you don't have that stress relief just yet is there is is, is that scaring you a little bit uh i feel like i'm not too scared of relegation anymore i think the fact that i was there in 15th and now that i've got gold and i've suddenly moved up to 11th i feel like that that's in like a weight lifted off my shoulder, like just my shoulders. You know, I only had one medal before last weekend. Um, so that's helped. I think, yeah, getting a gold and then trying to then work my way towards a champion is, is better. I mean, obviously, if I got that at step one, I would have felt a lot better than what I did you know, last weekend before <laughs> my step. But I also, I wasn't worried last step. I wasn't worried about, oh, you know, Ah, uh, there's there's no chance of me doing anything. I felt confident going into it. I felt like I had the good preparation and I was ready. You know, I had a, I I was feeling good on the day and yeah, I wasn't I wasn't stressed. I think yeah, now that I I'm feeling more confident on the tracks, you know, getting used to them a lot easier. Not worrying about other people's times as well also helps i think for some reason my mindset i was just like oh my god these guys they got such like so many good times mine week one was like all world records and i thought oh my god this is like how are these guys doing this how are they spending all this time and getting all these world records and i can't get anywhere near them so i was just freaking out about that whereas (laughs) normally i don't normally i just think right i just need to be consistent and you know be up there but for some reason, I couldn't get it out of my head, and now they, now on these steps, I just I don't worry about other people's times. I just focus on me, know that I am fast myself on the tracks, and that I'm, you know, now near their times when they've only got like a week to train. So it, it helps. It it definitely helps my own mindset, and I think you know focusing on yourself definitely betters you in these kind of events rather than thinking about everybody else. All right. Well. Uh, there was a question from a viewer in chat, uh, just a quick one uh, to wrap this interview up. Uh, since you're rarely on Cup of the Day or other leaderboards, what maps do you play outside of TMGL maps or any outside of them? Or is that all you practice on? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I genuinely do not play anything else. I play TMGL oh, wow. um, and then the odd Cup of the Day. I think I do like one Cup of the Day a month, maybe. I think I've only ever played like 20, to be honest, in, in h- however long it's been out now. I just, yeah, I mean, I, uh, there's no excuses here or anything. I'm just going <laughs> to say it. I don't have time outside of like solely competing, I think. It's more, yeah, I, I you know, I do I do work, come home, I cook, I, I go to the gym as well. And then like either on the weekends, I have my social life that I, that I, I try and maintain like football and like seeing friends and all that sort of stuff. So I sort of just work and then 
I don't know, in the evening, if I've got time, get some practice going. And then, yeah, I, yeah, that's the only time I can really play the game. I think if I did incorporate, you know, like a cup of the day, which most of the days I can't even get back in time from work to play, um, it would sort of affect my TMGL even, even more than it already is. So, yeah, I sort of just... It's just TMJ at the moment. Uh, maybe in the future when TMJ isn't around, <laughs> you know, maybe like if the Raider Cup comes around and I'll play the Raider maps, and then when it's the World Cup, I'll play World Cup maps. But you know, it's sort of like competition by competition at the moment. Yeah, I can imagine uh, trying to fit in the time. It's can, it can be quite hard, but I want to thank you for at least getting the time to be on this interview, which is uh, already <laughs> very nice of you. Honestly, I and, genuinely uh, forgot about it. So thank God. I looked at the clock oh, and I you were like, just oh my in goodness, time. Like, like, <laughs> I have to be on an interview like right now. So I just ran and <laughs> ran and turned on my computer. But yeah, no, thanks for having me, guys. It's, uh, it's been nice to be on the show because I was, I was worried this season I might not even appear. <laughs> it's a pleasure well, to have Here you are at least. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. Some cheers, guys. Well, I'll be honest, that is the most, I think, shaken a player has seemed in terms of their own performance so far. Normally, everyone we have on is a bit confident, relaxed, composed, happy, in the case of Old Duck, or now, I guess, a little bit nervous, I would argue, in the case of Pack. Not necessarily at the peak of where we'd expect him to be in the performances. They match the personality, in a sense. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, it's a little bit of a survivorship bias there, where we, of course, are interviewing the people that got champion yeah. medals the last week. So <laughs> it makes sense that they uh, are more confident. Yeah. But uh, yeah, these interviews are also very interesting to me. You see how Pac can regain his confidence, which it seems like he did in the last week. And mm -hmm. uh, let's see if he can carry that momentum. Kappa was pretty confident last week in the interview. And yeah, it happened again. Another strong week from him. So maybe mm -hmm. Pac can pull it off as well. Well, uh, speaking of next week, we do have two new maps coming for the upcoming week, and we're going to have them brought up for you now. The first map, I believe, for next week, I'm going to pull it up real quick because I don't have it on hand, but it'll appear it's on your over. screen any second. It is turn <laughs> over. It is turn a, over the, fl the scene, yeah. Yeah, I turn over the uh, the page on Liquipedia. <laughs> so I can see it. Uh, but yeah, it is turn over for next week. I believe we do have a little video for that. So have a look at this. All right, and yeah, as you can see, we got a little clip of, uh, it looks like Papu here running over the map. And yeah, the first thing that comes to mind when looking at this one is there's a lot of plastic in this. And a lot of water as well there. But uh, it, the map itself lives up to its name very quickly. There, there are not many opportunities for you to uh, or not be flipping back over yourself. The map seems to just double back <laughs> every five seconds, but... It's a very clean map. I really enjoy the aesthetic of it, especially this section. The backwards driving. It's going to be so crucial for these drivers because that's an incredibly risky aspect already. And now doing it in such a high pressure situation, it's going to be almost impossible. Yeah, and I, honestly, I like the variety in uh, the maps that we get in TMGL where really like like Pac already said, some, sometimes maps suit him, sometimes it, uh, they don't. And uh, it seems like this week he's more ready for them. And yeah, because we have so many different maps, we can see very different performances from the players every week. And uh, yeah, I wonder what we will uh, see coming up in the next week. Yeah, and speaking of next week, there is one more map to find, and that one will be Heart. I uh, was told this one in advance, so I don't mess up the name. Here, the track <laughs> preview for it.
All right, hard it is. And, uh, you know, this is one of them where I wouldn't immediately say that it's named after the identity. Instead, it's named after the beautiful scenery that we can see uh, from the pictures as well. Oh. Uh, Heart is, uh, you know, a little bit spreading a little bit of love in the TMGL might be good as well. Yeah, I mean, that's the emoji I'd stick on this in a reaction message if I saw it pop up in Discord. It, it is a beautiful map. I, I absolutely adore it. Uh, and it's one of the more risky finishes because your heart's going to be in your mouth as you come across the identity on this map. It is genuinely terrifying. All of the jumps and landings remind us of old Trackmania maps. I, I've thrown back to Nations Forever maps with a couple of the ways these are set up. The remakes, perhaps, or inspired. Uh, a little bit but it, it's one of the more complicated ones that you've got to be 100% committed on these jumps otherwise it, it could be the end of your your run in TMGL you know we need drivers or certain players need to have big performances over the next couple of over the next couple of weeks this is going to be the map that will probably secure them either a champion medal or maybe knock them down to a gold when they need it the most yeah, indeed. So there's going to be a lot of training for the players that especially are hunting for that champion medal. Maybe Otak will be going for gold instead. But mm -hmm. uh, we will have a lot of players that are just going to know life hard here and uh, get <sighs> every little inch out of it that they can. Yeah. So I'm very excited to once again see the matches coming up this Sunday. Yeah, but also this Sunday or this weekend I should say TMGLC is on and we've got to look at the rankings right now it, it has been a very competitive season but there seems to be one player starting to edge away from everyone else that is Soldier, the Belgian doing an amazing job picking up their third champion medal this last week, a, a very strong performance from someone who's proven themselves time and time again at this level yeah he is back at it again with another champion medal <laughs> is now just ahead of the game here with three of them which i mean in tmgl we don't even even have a player that has two <laughs> yeah and here is soldier <laughs> completely dominating with uh his one little slip up of a gold medal oh dear how bad oh, no. is that <laughs> uh so yeah he is doing really well and now he uh this week he got a new teammate as well mm. tween is also now in his same org uh hey. numelovs and so, talk about tween He's not a 16 anymore. Yeah, he's got a gold medal to his name. I think that pickup from... I, I'm not going to pronounce it. I'm just going to say Numelops. Uh, it's a huge pickup for them because that, that's just given between all of the momentum in the world. Going from just a bronze medal to now a gold and a bronze puts him on the verge of getting to a top eight. All he would need is one more to hopefully not a strong performance from either Mikko, Doc or Razi. And he could jump up to top eight, which would be so huge. After what has been a very... I would argue lackluster season so far and a season maybe that he's hoping to try and turn around in you know or turn over you could say in the past in the next few weeks that's a bad turn over that i'm sorry yeah, that's uh, no actually I, I like it a lot so that, oh, that was did? a good one okay. <laughs> hey i won one <laughs> phoebe are you proud of me <laughs> <laughs> yeah but we uh we take a look here now that we are in after week four there are you know two more steps left Mm -hmm. yeah, Soldier, of course, pretty darn safe there in the top four, where you want to be to try and get into the final of the Challenger. But it's especially close between Link and Enner, who both have one champion medal. And yeah. Miquatro as well, who is a little bit safer because he has that third gold medal. It's looking good for him. But yeah, Link and Enner are got to battle it out for that number four spot. And meanwhile, lurking in the shadows, we have Avon with three gold medals. So mm. if he got a champion medal, he can jump up there as well. Yeah, and Skandir as well on too. Also, just there's, yeah. there's a lot of players hovering just the way he's out. But again, it's the same situation as we saw with Puck in, in TMGL. You need that champion medal now. That's the most important medal. Golds are not going to get you into top four anymore. You need to win big. You need to be the top two in every single match the next week or so. It's really important, especially for Enna, who started off with the gold in week one. And now is out of the top four to face off against the TMGL players. That's it's a drop, maybe something not expected for, from and maybe not something anyone really expected. The fact that you can get a champion medal and then not be able to face TMGL players just from the way that everything's shaken down over the past three weeks and four weeks to get to this point. It, it will take a, a monumental effort now to try and recuperate the mind, to recuperate the soul, and push on for that second champion medal for any one of those players. 
Yeah, indeed. And we're going to see that this Sunday uh, once again. Uh, let's see if Soldier can get to the, uh, the four champion medals. We'll have to see. But yeah, I mean, he's definitely the one I have my eyes on because he's been doing really well this season. And I don't see him stopping, honestly. Mm. And I don't think I can see him stopping either. He's flying through everyone. Miquatro maybe is a close second. Is someone that's been consistent. But speaking of consistently, we've got another four players qualified for TMGL. Oh, we're going to throw it over to this. We got to see uh, another three players join. And it's uh, it's an all-friend lineup. Who could have predicted yeah, well, it? <laughs> yeah, indeed. Well, it's, uh, it looks like it's... Uh... All, the, all four of them have the same colors in the flag, but it oh, looks like Alcon... Oh, I messed up. I'm so sorry, Alcon. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? No. How dare I? <laughs> Hunting ice and I messed up his flag. Oh, my girlfriend's going to kill me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Alcon also sneaking in alongside the French, hiding in plain sight. Uh, Mimo, Coco, and Dionysos. Dionysus? I... Yeah, sure. There's, there's a lot of different <laughs> pronunciations. Apparently, the French is uh, Dionysus, which... No, it's Dionysus, but anyway, uh, th they've all qualified very strong performances from them, especially Elgon, who had a very, very impressive performance. Maybe the most popular name, arguably, on that list. Maybe close to Barbos, I would argue. Yeah, indeed, and it's also interesting to see uh, Coco back at it again, yeah. which uh, is definitely a name we've seen in the TMGL circuit before. Uh, very, very good player, and now it looks like he is ready to get himself back into challenger mode, so that's interesting to see as well. Yeah, just uh, four really good players here in the open uh, as another open finalist, and there are only four spots left now, Ooh. so time is running out if you want to qualify yourself. <laughs> yeah, and you can do that by checking out the calendar, which will be popping up on your screen ASAP. There it is, it's a beautiful one. It's April Magic. The 2nd, 5 p.m. Central European time. I believe it's CEST now, though I'm not necessarily certain on that one. Uh, it, 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 turn up to it, give it a go, is basically what I would say. You go into a time attack, you give it a shot on two, I think it's two maps, if I remember correctly. Uh, what I, I do, what I do see here is in the notes, it's telling me it's Saturday 8 p.m. CET. So we might want to check trackmania-grand-league.com to double check when the open qualifier will be. Don't trust us. Uh, do not trust yeah, us. Yeah, don't trust us. We are yeah. only the weekly host. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. We know nothing. <laughs> we, we, get, we don't even get given a sheet. I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, <laughs> we're doing this all off the top of our heads. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. I mean, our own show notes is what I'm talking about, uh, of course. <laughs> but, yeah, it, try and get yourself into that TMGO load final. It is 100% worth it. Even just for the experience of competing or attempting to compete at that level, it gets you that experience. It gets you in the jive. Uh, the jive? Yeah, we'll go with it. For for yeah, competing at that pace. That's a word, right? I think so. I think so. Sounds, I think it sounds like a word. It's a word, but it's not the word I'd want to use. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, get, gets you into the rhythm of competing in that. That's where I came from. Uh, of that sort of competition at that sort of level. Uh, and then maybe if that's for you, you can keep pushing on, learn the next maps, and maybe give it a shot yourself going into next week. Of course, May the 8th. TMGLC promotion, it is, that's that's where we're looking to, to, to really focus up the next few weeks. Coming from April 16th on the final, obviously that's the most important event. But the, watching how the next few weeks are going to unfold, it's going to be incredible. Because it feels like everything is coming to a boil now with the final two weeks. And everyone is pushing to get those champion medals, no matter what league you're in. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see who gets themselves into the Chilean Grand League Challenger Series next mm -hmm. season. You know, get some new blood in there and, uh, you know, throw up the standings a little bit. Um, very, very interested to see who can make it. Yeah, we've seen TMGL players bounce through to TMGL, uh, from TMGLC and shake it up in Mime and oh, Altak. Yeah. yeah, so you never know. You could be the player. If you come up through TMGLO, you could find yourself in amongst the pigeons and be that cat to uh, to get them to fly away. The metaphor got away from me, just like the pigeons did. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was about to say, I guess the metaphor flew away from you. But yeah. uh, <laughs> with that, time also flies, as they say. Ah. And we are at the end of the stream. Yeah, I can do I do, I can do can a little more play as well. Ooh. But uh, we're here at the end of the weekly show. That was it for us. My name is Sino Sapo, and with me, I have fallen. We are will be back for next week, 8 p.m. The same time as this, uh, this one for another couple of interviews. An another highlight reel. Yeah, I just can't wait for another weekly show because this is a lot of fun. 
Oh, it's a blast to be on the call with you, mate. And it's a pleasure to be doing this to give you the catch up on what happened this past week and hopefully give you a look to next week with those maps, uh, the map lists and presentations. I, for one, can't wait for it. And uh, oh, do you want to see us a little uh, goodbye? I, th I don't yeah, know how we A quick little wink here in the yeah, camera. Anchor. And uh, that should be good. <laughs> I All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah, we should. You should look at uh, race driver Mark's uh, uh, stream for that. <laughs> All right. Thanks everyone for watching, and see you next week. Bye bye.